Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. So much sadness, but honestly, so many great stories right now. Texas Democrats, the ones who fled to Washington, D.C., the freedom fighters, the ones who came on a pilgrimage with nothing but a case of Miller Lite and the coronavirus. Well, it turns out they've just claimed several more victims. A White House official and an aide to the Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi, have tested positive for COVID-19. Apparently, they got it from the pilgrims from Texas. In a moment, we'll have an update on the conditions of the victims and the scale of the super spreader event. But first tonight, there are a lot of different ways to sell out to China if you're looking to do that. If you're an unscrupulous finance mogul in New York, for example, you can just prop up the Chinese economy with billions in investment. Wall Street has been doing that for decades. If you're an elected official in Washington with a flair for demagoguery, you can do your part by pretending that the real threat to this country isn't the rise of Chinese power and ambition. No, 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 no. The real threat is that dastardly Vladimir Putin and his team of secret agents and his network of Macedonian troll farms. Just go on television a lot and say that and maybe people will believe you. The question is, what if you don't have the money or the rhetorical skills to do either one of those things, but you still want to help? What if you're a not very bright third string Democratic congressman from the East Bay? How can you do your part for Xi Jinping? Well, you could just find a Chinese spy and then have sex with her repeatedly. That's what Eric Swalwell did. Now, we're not going to get into the details of their relationship because this is a family show and honestly, it's pretty creepy. But we can tell you the spy's name was Fang Fang. And no, we're not making that up. Fang Fang, unfortunately, is not available to join us on the show tonight. She's fled back to her handlers on the Chinese mainland ahead of a Justice Department investigation. But amazingly, Eric Swalwell is still with us. He's still around. In fact, he's been elevated to a seat on the House Intel Committee, the perfect reward for the boyfriend of a Chinese spy. In a city obsessed with collusion with foreign powers, Eric Swalwell exits his relationship with the Chinese spy and ascends to the Intel Committee. It does make you wonder. Swalwell, you'll recall, came from nowhere nine years ago to beat one of the most powerful and longest serving members of Congress, Fortnoy Pete Stark. It took an awful lot of money to do that, but somehow, despite being mediocre and inarticulate and totally unknown and very young, Eric Swell had the money to do that. So where did that money come from? Good question. After the election, the FBI determined that Eric Swell had raised most of that money illegally. A donor called James Tong had supplied the money without complying with campaign finance laws. To this day, we have no idea where most of that cash came from. Swalwell, of course, pleaded ignorance. And because he's dumb, the authorities apparently believed him. How would he know he was breaking the law? The guy's an idiot. That was their reasoning. Swalwell blushed and promised never to do it again. So from the very first day, there have been real questions about this Eric Swalwell character, if that is indeed is his real name. But you'd never know it now. Such is the magic of resume laundering and the distorting power of the American news media. Even a moron with a weakness for sex with Chinese spies over time begins to look like Henry Kissinger if he does enough cable news hits. And that's exactly where Eric Swalwell is today. The spy's boy toy is now an elder statesman. That's his personal assessment of himself. Listen. It's pro wrestling, uh, to be honest. Many of my colleagues are better suited to work at the WWE. Uh, and, and I say that about <laughs> Gates because I've worked with him on marijuana issues. I've worked with him on other issues, especially really before Trumpism took off and he turned into a character. And he would, there were times where he would laugh at himself about how stupid he had to act, you know, to keep, you know, the act going. I've been working on marijuana issues, says Eric Swalwell, but the rest of those guys, they're all clowns, says Swalwell adjusting his plastic nose and fright wig and applying more grease paint. I'm the only serious person in this building, me and Fang Fang. It is just too funny. Meanwhile, wasn't it just last week that we got that picture of Eric Swalwell grinning shirtless on a camel and cutter as his faithful servant of color, his coolie, looked on adoringly in the foreground? Eric Swalwell, the great white hunter of Alameda, leopards fear him. That particular camel hunt, by the way, was paid for by business interests in the Persian Gulf. Oh, so we're starting to sense a theme here. Eric Swalwell has a problem with money. Shocked? You shouldn't be. Like so many progressives, Swalwell's deepest desire is to live like a rich guy out of some movie. And that's difficult on a congressman's salary, so corners get cut. 
Here's the latest example of that. Campaign finance records obtained by Fox News show that Eric Swalwell spent thousands in campaign contributions. That's money he raised to run for office, money he is prohibited by federal law from spending on himself. He spent that money on expenses that seem suspiciously like personal luxuries. Those would include limo rides, booze deliveries, high-end steakhouses. And some of those expenditures appear very clearly to be for personal use. And again, that's illegal. For example, one order at the alcohol delivery service Drizzly was for under $10. Was that a campaign event? No. The man just wanted his tequila sunrise and he wanted it now. And so the donors paid for it. Most interestingly, on the disclosure form, more than $20,000 of Eric Swell's campaign expenditures went to the Ritz-Carlton Hotel in Half Moon Bay, California. Now, weirdly, or maybe not so weirdly, Eric Swalwell's wife is an executive at that very hotel. So clever members of Congress, the honest ones, don't do things like that. And when they do things like that, they tend to get in very deep trouble. In fact, it was just two years ago that Congressman Duncan Hunter of San Diego, same state, different party, pleaded guilty in federal court to stealing hundreds of thousands of dollars in campaign funds that he and his wife used for personal expenses. He went to jail for 11 months. Then in 2013, you'll also recall Congressman Jesse Jackson Jr. and his wife, both Democrats, went to prison for the same thing. Now, we're not saying Eric Swalwell should be charged with sleeping with a Chinese spy or for misusing campaign funds. But we do know that under the standards that Eric Swalwell himself has laid out, we're going to need an immediate federal investigation, possibly a special counsel. The American people deserve to know what the Russians have exactly on Donald Trump. Whether it was witting or unwitting, the end result is just as destructive because the president has drawn us close to a foreign adversary who is not our friend. <laughs> oh, Eric Swell is saying someone else drew close to a foreign adversary who's not our friend. Really, how close, Eric Swell? Well, hmm? <laughs> So what's going on with Eric Swalwell and why don't we deserve to know what a sitting member of the House Intelligence Committee is doing with Russian spies with his campaign contributions and on that now famous camel in Qatar? And what does his coolie think of this? Does he really adore Eric Swalwell as he pretended to in the picture? Probably not. Let's subpoena him. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.